I knew I said I was going to make this video at 8.30. I posted this earlier, but I'm just going to start earlier because I feel like I have to, not to hurry up, I'm just excited. I had a little extra time on my hands, so I thought might as well just start this video. I'm going to wait a little bit so everyone else can log on right now. And I am so amazed at what God just showed me in the past hours. I've been praying since, since uh, I think, noon. And, uh, oh my gosh, it's, it's so much. There's so much that was shown to me. If you haven't seen the other video I made, go back and I talk about the other video. Uh, I need to try to find the title. It's where I'm outside. And the last time I was outside, I was going on, I was on my way from school, on my way to work. And when I was outside, I was just so tired. And when the last time and God told me, this is weeks ago. Uh, so God, t the last time he tells me that I was hungry. So before I go to my next class, he tells me to go to where my prayer, my prayer area is around the back. Don't even do anything. Go and pray. You, you're hungry. Go feed on my word because you're hungry. You're starving. And this is like early December. And the reason why he said that was because I was already getting home, unlock the gate. I'm already getting inside my house, but he tells me, don't even go inside yet. Before you open the door, go and go over there, go to your prayer area and pray because you're spiritually starved. And around the time of December is when people are usually starved because of just the, uh, you know, hi, Carmen. Uh, they're usually starved because of uh, school, especially college finals, all that. But also, it, this is a really powerful thing. So from that last video, you have to understand this before I can give you this video. So the last video, he tells me, uh, oh, I remember now. The video is called, Are You Hungry and Are You Hungry or Thirsty? And it was actually prophetic from God because what that time I was sitting in the chair outside and he tells me uh, to open up my hands. I open up my hands as I'm praising and worshiping, no music or anything, just me crying out to him because I felt like I was hungry and I have this rest in him. And then a drop of rain falls on my hand and as he's washing away everything. So in that area was only sprinkling of rain. And I checked and I was like, it's not even raining. It was only raining over me, like literal, literal rain over me. So I go check and everything else is dry around my house. It's super dry, but only that area around me. And I go back and he tells me, I open up my Bible. He's like, I didn't tell you to stop praying. So he takes, and after I'm praying and praying, and he tells me that uh, there would be more enemies coming out. There would be more people coming against us, Christians, more persecution taking place, but also a bigger restoration and how God would always have the last word. So he tells me how I'm spiritually starved. And after that, he tells me, okay, now you can go confirm it in, in the Bible. So I go to Psalm 60. He takes me to Psalm 63 and 64. And those chapters, it's maybe like 10 or 9 verses or even 11 the most. It's not really that big of a chapter. In Psalm 63, the way he spoke it to me, telling me I was spiritually starved, it's like the same way the psalmist or David is telling God like to feed him and that how he thirsts for God and how he hungers for God. And I didn't even know about that in Psalm 63 and 64. So I see it in specific order. The way God told me before I started praying was the same way that Psalm 63 and 64 and how he delivers them from his enemies. And it was just an amazing thing. But also from the last video, are you hungry and are you thirsty? When I made that, God told me that in 2020, it would be very prophetic in 2020 because there would be a younger generation, people who you would never think that God would use for 2020, he will use. People who would probably be convicts or felons or all of this, he will use. People who you'd probably think would never even go to church, he will restore and bring up. Just like as he tells uh, the prophet Ezekiel to prophesy and to speak life to these dry bones. That dry bone, Those dry bones in Ezekiel, that's Israel. And I don't know if you've noticed from my other videos. Go back and watch all my other videos. I give all these prophecies. And Ezekiel, he tells, he tells Ezekiel that these dry bones, this is Israel, the Jews, his first chosen people. And throughout many of the thousand years, God has actually restored Israel. And I already have already given many prophecies in the other videos. So go watch that. But I need to talk to you about 50, 5780 which is 2020. 5780 means 2020, but 5780, which is our 20, Jewish, uh, the Jewish 2020, it already took place. And in uh, September, 
September through October or the fall, the fall months. So the Jewish calendar is different than ours, right? So when I was praying to God, he told me to go into Joel into the book of Acts and he told me about 2020. And he's telling me, remember what I told you from weeks ago in that other video that you made? I need you to look into it again, even deeper. And I'm like, okay, I want, I was like, all right. So I'm praying about this all day today. And I'm asking him, what do you, what does 5780 mean? Because in the Hebrew translations of the calendar, it's 5780, but in the Hebrew alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet is, uh, the Hebrew alphabet has numbers. So if you go to the Hebrew, alf the Hebrew alphabet, there's 22 letters and each letter has a number. So if you put in uh, none, which or noon, none is 50. And the symbol for that is a fish. Zayin is a seven, so 50 and seven. Zayin means it's a sword. And pay is the last one, which is 80 for 5780, means it's a mouth, right? So I've noticed in every time I give these videos, sometimes I feel like there's fire coming out of my throat and my mouth when God really starts to take over. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm feeling him right now. But you know what? It took me to, it, he took me to Joel and X. But before that, I want to talk to you about just a small, you need to understand this, a small, small part of 5780. So for the word or the letter nun or noon, which is the number 50, the symbol mean, the symbol of that fish, it means to, it's an activity. It means life or moving, right? Zayin, which is the number seven, that letter Zayin, it means it's a sword. So that sword, the meaning of that symbol is to plow, to scatter, or to cut off. Don't forget that. The number seven. And pay, the last, the last letter of 5780, the number 80. It's a mouth. And the symbol is to speak, to praise, to blow with that mouth. So put it together. You have the fish, the sword, the mouth. And it's all based off of scripture, right? So when I was understanding this, and then God told me to go back to the book of Acts, I'm reading maybe the first chapters of one and two, actually maybe one through three, because in the book of Acts, the book of Acts, God is, is, uh, after Jesus ascends. Well, I think in, I believe in Acts chapter two, when the Holy Spirit actually finally, he finally falls upon the 12 disciples. Peter, Luke, John, all of them, right? And this is the day of Pentecost. And on Pentecost, well, that's where you have the den the denomination where they speak in tongues of Pentecostals, but that's a whole nother thing. But in Pentecost, as they're praying and they're waiting for the promise that Jesus gave for the Holy Spirit, he, the Holy Spirit falls upon them and that's when they begin speaking in tongues. And But then you got people mocking the disciples and mocking all of them and for praying as they're praying they're speaking in tongues and i'm sure most of you already know about speaking in tongues but they're speaking in tongues and they're understanding each other they're understanding each other and when they're speaking in tongues some of the people are mocking them and making fun of them saying oh but uh these look at these like look at these guys they're drunk they're making fun of them and peter peter tells them no we're not drunk this is God's Holy Spirit. This is the promise that Jesus gave us before he ascended to heaven. Because, and Peter, Peter recites the Old Testament. He gives that Old Testament scripture of Joel 2.28. And he says that the sons, sons, daughters, they would have visions, prophesy, old men will dream dreams. The maids, the servants, they would all have that spirit poured out by God in the last days, which is these days. But, when I was praying about this, I stopped reading and God told me, now you need to go to Joel to understand whatever happened with Joel's timeline. You need to understand that because it's going to happen with your timeline in 2020. And I'm like, okay. So I go to the book of Joel. There's only three chapters. But if you see, Joel is one of the minor prophets of the Old Testament before Christ. And nobody knew who really, uh, nobody knew when Joel was written, but we do know that Joel did recite other scriptural books. He did know about Nahum. He did know about the major prophets, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and all of them. But then Joel, he calls Israel, he calls the Jews, to his people to repentance. He doesn't say the sin they did. He just calls them to repentance. So they, some scholars say it might've been off of 
uh, what Isaiah and them were talking about, so they would have already known. But he calls them to repentance. And later on through Joel chapter 2, it says that God has a passion because these people, they, Joel cries out for his people and, and asks God for forgiveness for Israel. But you know what I noticed is that when I'm seeing the symbol of 2020, when I'm seeing the Jewish calendar that represents 2020, 5780, which means 2020 in the Jewish calendar, with the, each symbol, God was speaking to me. And he was telling me, for 5780, which is 2020, uh, I'm going to cut off some people from your, from your life. I'm going to cut off some people from your life. There's going to be more people coming to you like you because I'm building up a nation, a spiritual nation, a spiritual army for his glory. And each for 2020, it's funny because in the letters that represent 5780, there's the fish. For the image of noon, it means to scatter, to scatter and to move all the people. And you know how Jesus tells Peter that he would, Jesus tells Peter that he would uh, have him as a fisherman of men, right? But then the symbol for fish means the, the activity, the movement of God. And the sword in Zion, which is number seven, the Zion, the letter for that is a sword, which means to scatter and to cut off, right? But how are you going to cut that off with your mouth? You're going to cut it off with your mouth. And the 80 and 5780, pay, that letter, means to speak, to praise, to blow. Anytime you speak, it's to glorify God. Anytime you praise, it's going to glorify God. Anytime you blow, you're blowing the trumpet with your mouth because God says to raise up your voice like a trumpet. And when he says to raise up your voice like a trumpet, then you're giving him glory and it all comes out from the fruitfulness from not what you're saying, but what God's saying from when he takes over the fire from your mouth. And from that fire in your mouth comes his Holy Spirit as for those that are in Christ, the Holy Spirit doesn't live next to us. The Holy Spirit lives in us, right? And this is why from the last video, I tell you, I really encourage you to go see the last video because God told me on that last video, it would be like the day of Pentecost. It would be like that persecution of the first century church with the book of Acts when Peter, Paul, Luke, John, and all of them would just be, you know, they'd be go going and preaching the gospel. And when they would have persecution, they, they'd be tortured, stoned to death, chopped off and killed. But the persecution is going to be in a different form through legislating, through LGBT coming against Christians and more. But then you also have Peter reciting from Joel 2.20. If, if we're going to have a parallel with the book of Acts, then how much more with Joel, right? And this is just amazing what God has been showing. You need to see all my videos to understand this or some of them at least. Go even look at Jonathan Khan. You see how the Jews are coming back to Israel. So if the Jews go back to actually Jerusalem, which is Zion, where everything started on that holy land, then that means that Jesus, when he comes back, he's going to finish it off there. And this is what I saw. When I'm reading, when I'm reading from Joel chapter one, where God told me before I even, I didn't even, I haven't even read Joel chapter one uh, before any of this, what God was showing me. God told me this before I read Joel chapter one. So just like, this is just amazing. Listen up. What God told me before I read Joel chapter one, the very first verses, he says, I'm going to cut off the, the wickedness. But this, you have to make up your mind when it comes to the salvation. You can accept it and live for Christ. Or you can think you accept it. Put on a shell just because you don't want to go to hell. And you will be cut off. So as God says, I'm going to cut off these evil, wicked things. I'm going to cut off all these people. So, And I'm going to surround you with more people like you that are in, that are in Christ for his glory then it's going to be like that book of Acts. It's going to be a small portion, but there's going to be a new generation that are, that's going to rise up. And that new generation is going to rise up and it's going to be on fire for God. So this is from, I'm going to read from chapter 1, verse 2 of the book of Joel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear. All the inhabitants of the land, had this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers, tell your children of it and let your children Tell their children and their children tell another generation. But then, he says, that which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten, and which the locust hath eaten, the cankerworm, and which the cankerworm 
half the caterpillar eaten. And Joel is telling everyone, Joel is telling everyone, Awake ye drunkards and weep and howl and drinkers of wine because of the new wine for it is cut off from your mouth. What he says here, what Joel's telling them, he's telling the drunkards, all the people still stuck in their sin, wake up. He's telling them to wake up. He says to wake up because, well, just like the parallels of back then, there's going to be a new generation, not just me, but other people telling you, wake up. I'm telling you right now, along with other people, wake up from every sin that you're doing. Wake up from drinking, from your smoking, from your cussing, from doing all of this. Why? Not because of me, not because of, of fear. There should be a fear in the Lord, but I'm telling you because God's mercy is so much greater than his wrath that he gives you that chance to repent. But if you don't take that opportunity to repent, to have that repentance daily, to live in repentance, you will perish. But then Joel says, For a nation is come upon my land strong without number, whose teeth are the teeth of lion, and he hath the cheek of a great lion. Cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. And I'm going to stop right there because you know why he mentions a fig tree? Just like Adam and Eve when when Adam and Eve tried to cover up their shame after they sinned against God from the forbidden fruit as they gave into the to being deceived by Satan, by the serpent. They tried to cover up their shame, their sins with the fig tree and leaves because they didn't know they were naked before. Back then they were covered with God's glory, but when they covered up that fig tree and leaf, they had that shame. But it says that he barks away the fig tree and the leaf. He barks away the fig tree and the leaf. Joe's saying that God barks it away and he covers it up and he puts on the glory on us. Not because we deserve it, but because God deserves the glory and he covers us with his blood. And this is all for 2020 as he restores up a new nation. Just like how it was in the book of Acts, Peter's reciting about Peter's reciting the Old Testament from Joel 2.28 on how men, women would have visions, dreams, old men, young men. And Joel in the book of Joel, he's, he's telling them, repent. He's talking about who God is. He's telling them to come back to God. But then in Joel 2.13, he's saying that God doesn't want your, he doesn't want your, your fake repentance. He doesn't want to just, oh, forgive me, Lord, and then just continue on in living in sin. He wants a genuine repentance. He wants you to cry over that. He wants you to actually feel that. And you know what I've noticed over the times? God has actually shown me every time I pray, there's always a rumbling in my stomach. I know you guys understand this when you're hungry or when you're eating food. There's even, it doesn't matter what it is. There's a rumbling in your stomach, right? When you're eating, it satisfies you. But what about on the spiritual side, when the Holy Spirit lives in you? You know, you can feel a groaning, a rumbling in your stomach because you're hungry and thirsting and hungering for the word of God. You need to, this is what you need to fill your spirit with with his word but also to live in his word your stomach rumbles when you pray it rumbles when you pray because it's the living waters just flow through there and when i say the living waters it's when god washes away every sin that you've committed everything that you've done and or you're just resting inside him not a physical rest but a spiritual rest inside him and when that rumbling of your stomach just feels satisfied and that's why it rumbles it's like the spirit is coming out and the utterance comes out. Just like when you speak in tongues. Some of you know what I'm talking about. When you speak in tongues and when the rumbling comes out and you just, you feel that utterance and you just feel like you can't hold it in. So you start prophesying and speaking. Everything just comes down. That fire comes out the same way. It's going to be like that. But in 2020, more people are going to get saved. More persecution is going to happen. But off of that persecution and you know what? I'm glad persecution's coming. This is going to sound really ugly to some of you, but I am glad persecution is coming. I'm glad LGBT is going to persecute us. I'm glad people are going to persecute me for what I say about Donald Trump and how he's anointed by God and I will vote for him next year. You know why? I'm glad that persecution is coming because when that persecution comes, the persecution gives birth to the restoration that God has, just like through with Israel through 2000 years and so on. Israel, Jerusalem has been restored. So how much more with, with God's people? For Israel isn't just the only one, you know. We used to be Gentiles, but look how God's restoring us. How America is one of the best nations, or the best nation in the entire world. The best country. And God says, 
towards uh, Joel, Joel chapter 3, that he would defeat that evil. He would restore Israel. And that's actually been taking place. But notice also, they, and throughout even the Old Testament, God is always saying that that temple shall be rebuilt. Now, the third temple hasn't been rebuilt yet. They're working on it. But two temples have been rebuilt. Now, God's not only trying for 2020. He's not trying to rebuild the temples. He's not trying to just rebuild the temples of our lives. Our body is a temple. Just like when you go to church, you don't want to, you don't cuss in there. You don't do anything in there. So if God says you are his temple, why would you cuss? Why would you do so many ugly things in his house? You are his house. If you, if you're a real Christian, God lives inside you. You are his house. You would have respect for him because he lives inside you for, we are the church. But when we meet up in a building, that's because the church has a place to meet up in and where the atmosphere changes after praying, praising and worshiping. But when I say that 2020 comes with a symbol of the sword, the sword and the sword of the spirit, the fire, the utterance of the Holy Spirit coming out of the mouth of believers, it will come with that restoration. Many of you have seen my videos and some of you don't even comment. Some of you don't even do any. Some of you probably just watch them. You don't even like, you don't like the video or you don't even heart it or anything. I don't care. But I know some of you that just heart the video or some of you that just watch them, you will be changed. Some of you will be. You're probably going to end up making videos like I am. You're probably going to go preaching or witnessing to someone to at least that one soul that longs to hear the truth or is that's hungry and thirsty. But just like El Joe says, how he will cut them off, cut off the locusts of our lives. He'll cut off the, the ugliness, the ugly fig trees out of our lives. We don't have to cover ourselves with that shame anymore. We're covering ourselves with the blood of Christ, with the blood of the lamb. And some of you are probably going to hate me for this. There's going to be fire and utterance. So you know what? I might as well say this now getting into the near year. I, when I give these videos, I don't want anyone to feel offended. If you feel offended, go take it up with God because I'm saying everything from his word. I'm not taking, I'm not giving my own opinion. So let's just clear the air. I'm not a conservative. All right. And if you want to call me that, all right, fine, whatever. Because I only go and vote off of what God says and how, how God says to when praying. But when it comes to his anointed, yeah, I will vote for Donald Trump. I will vote for Donald Trump because he has been appointed by God. And I already gave a video about this, but also I will also continue to preach against homosexuality. I will continue to preach against drinking, smoking, cussing. Each sin is still a sin. When God says it's a sin, it's a sin. And why do we say this? Not because we hate anyone, but because we love each and every one of you and we don't want anyone to perish. And that's why 2020, we don't care. We're in the point where Christians, I know some Christians are watching this around the world because this is just, this isn't going just on Facebook. This is going on Instagram, on YouTube, on whatever, everything. I'm posting this everywhere. But Christians, we're tired of people over here saying that we're the ones that are the problem. No, the problem is your sin. It's not just your sin. It's our sin as Christians too. When people need to make up their minds and we need to stop living in the world. We need to stop being a part of this whole Jezebel corporation just taking over. All right. That's why 5780, 2020 is the year where the sword of the spirit comes from the mouth and the utterance when that prophecy of Joel 228 and from Acts 2.17 is going to continue. The book of Acts church is going to continue to come out. We're coming out just like in 57.79, 2019. The serpents came out. Go look at the symbolism for 57.79. The serpents is a symbol of 2019. And the serpents came out. And look what happened with Donald Trump. You saw many serpents coming out in the White House. But how much more for the mouth of God just being manifesting through us, through our temple for him, for his glory coming out where we're not, we're tired. All right. We're tired of, of seeing, we're tired of seeing the mistakes of our fathers before us and our grandfathers and the generation before us. We're tired of seeing that. So I'm, I'm not just saying this for myself. I'm saying this for the generation even younger than I am. There's going to be a lot of wicked, wicked people, even way worse, but with persecution, there's going to be a greater restoration. So get ready for that. You want to put witchcraft on me? Go ahead. I know to fight back in the spirit. All right. And I'm saying this, I'm not saying this to people. I'm saying this to the spiritual beings that are actually watching this manifesting through those people. And most of you that are watching this, you guys are Christians too. So 
you should be with me on this because we all have this. We're, we're coming together, all right? And I, I'm excited for 2020 because I see more Christians actually coming together now. There was a scattering of Jews and there was also a scattering of Christians because of all these dumb false pagan religions and the, these other false religions all around the world. The New Age. I came out of the New Age. But when I see when I see this manifestation that God's doing, if only you under, if only you understood what God was showing me in my mind, what he was showing me, ev he was showing me like not everything, but just the details of all these things. I can't see the big picture yet, but I can see just that glimpse. And it's a huge glimpse. It, it was, it's a really powerful thing. If you've seen my video on Donald Trump on, is he appointed by God? That's just a small portion of what happens in my mind when God gives me these revelations with uh, somewhat of a photographic memory and the anointing to teach. But mark my words, God is building up a new army, a new nation, and this is not where the new generation is just going to come up, but we're going to reunite with the old generation. Some of you can't even respect your parents. Some of you can't even honor your mother and father. Some of you blaspheme the name of God when you say OMG, or when you say, uh, when you say God's word, God's name is a cuss word. Or when you take the name Jesus and use it in vain. Some of you can't have respect for that, but I can tell you one thing. God's mercy and grace is so good, and for 2020, God's still going to use people like that for his glory. God's still going to save people like that because he loves you. And I'm already saying this right now. You want to put some hexes, some witchcrafts, all this stuff on me and all my other brothers and sisters, go ahead. You ain't going to do anything because if you tried, mark my words, Romans chapter 12, verse 19, God is going to show up and avenge us. So I'm telling you, I'm telling this to people, Christians all around the world that are probably suffering because I lately I've had people from uh, I've had someone from Nigeria or I had, uh, you know, someone from another nation reach out to me and other people add me on Facebook or YouTube or email me. And I'm telling you this to the Christians around the world. Hang on there because 2020 God's going to give us something just huge and amazing. it just I can already see it, but I can't see it for you. So I need you to pray about this. I need you to get ready with me because in 2020, we're going to get persecuted like crazy for what we, how we say things uh, when it comes to Donald Trump, the White House and all this, or how it's LGBT, how is it with drinking and calling out other sins, calling out other religions. And even though there's going to be fire, we need to be wise in what we say to uh, the lost souls around the world because the lost souls I mean, they need us more than ever. They, God called us to be the light and salt of the earth. But we can't be losing our flavor. We can't let our light go down. We got to recharge every time. We got to keep that light. We got to light everywhere. Light that darkness. So for all you Christians suffering around the world, watching this, keep praying, keep fasting. Read Joel, read Joel chapter 1 all the way through 3 and read the book of Acts. And I promise you, God's going to give you a revelation of 2020. And go back and see my video with Donald Trump. Go back and see my video with Are You Hungry and Thirsty? And re-see this video. You're going to see the big picture of God's pointing and moving everything. God bless you guys.